All right, look, I get it. Nobody likes doing math, but I promise this is a really simple math lesson and it's one that you'll want to learn because it could save your life this winter. What we're about to do is very quickly learn how to turn your vehicle's fuel gauge into a clock. Sounds crazy, right? But consider, do you know how long you can idle your engine for on a liter of gasoline, and do you know how many liters of gasoline your fuel tank holds? Because if you do, you're a 15 second math lesson away from calculating how many hours of heat you can generate from your vehicle's current fuel supply during survival idling. That is, running your engine for heat to keep you warm if you're stuck in the cold and stranded helplessly and trying to keep alive until help arrives. So two disclaimers, first this math lesson specifically covers fuel injected gasoline engines and second, none of what I'm about to teach you takes precedence over being properly prepared and equipped with an emergency survival kit and other necessary safety gear, especially if you're doing a lot of miles in remote areas like I do. I'll write the math lesson, ready? Take the displacement of your vehicle's engine in liters and multiply that by 0.6. That's how many liters of gasoline your engine needs to run for one hour at idle. We'll use this Lexus IS300 as an example. It has a 3.5 liter engine, multiply by 0.6, and we arrive at the number 2.1. That's how many liters of gas this engine drinks for every hour it spends idling for heat. If you're stranded, one hour of warmth costs you 2.1 liters of gas. Or the Mazda 3 Sport Turbo. This one's got a 2.5 liter engine that's turbocharged, unlike the Lexus. The turbo has no effect on the math when the engine's idling for heat in survival mode, so the calculations are the same. 2.5 liter engine times 0.6, and that's 1.5 liters per hour of idling. Now to turn the fuel gauge into a survival clock of sorts, you'll just need to know how much fuel it holds. That's a quick web search away, just like the displacement of your car or truck's engine, in case you aren't sure, by the way. So for our Lexus, it's a 66 liter fuel tank and 2.1 liters per hour required for survival idling. That means a full tank of gas is good for about 31 hours of warmth. Half a tank makes it 15 hours and a quarter tank means it's less than eight. The Mazda has a smaller gas tank, but also an engine with less displacement. At 1.5 liters per hour of gas required for warmth, it basically ties the Lexus with 32 hours of full tank idling possible. Jeep Wrangler, a 3.6 liter engine makes it 2.2 liters per hour, and a 66 liter fuel capacity means 30 hours of full tank survival idling. The GMC Yukon with the 5.3 liter V8, that's 5.3 liters times 0.6, gives us 3.2 liters per hour of idling, and with a roughly 91 liter fuel tank, that's 28 hours of survival idling if the tank is full. Mustang 5.0 with the 61 liter gas tank, the math gives us 3 liters per hour, making it about 20 hours of idling on a full tank, 10 hours on the half a tank mark, and under 3 with a quarter. So if you drive something sporty, say with a big engine and smaller fuel tank, your warmth clock has a fair bit less time on it if you're stranded in the cold. On the other side of the spectrum, something with a relatively smaller engine and bigger fuel tank like the Honda CRV. With its 1.5 liter engine, the math gives us under one liter per hour while idling for heat, meaning that at full, its 53 liter gas tank is good for about 59 hours of idling. Hopefully, help arrives sooner, of course. So take this as a reminder to leave those fuel tanks and batteries full this winter, just in case. And hopefully you don't encounter a situation this winter where you'll need to use this math, but if you do, whether as a result of a mechanical failure, accident, or other setback that sees you stranded in the cold, this little exercise can help you more calmly navigate things by removing an important unknown from the situation. How long can you stay warm for? So whether your car has a big tank and little engine, little tank and big engine, or something in between, now you know how to do the math for yourself, thereby eliminating one stressful unknown if you get stranded. And don't forget to let your fellow drivers know down in the comments section below what you drive and how the math worked out for you. My name's Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca, and until next time, take care and drive safe.